I'm starting by just building this W12 engine unit as well as the center differential and front differential. Believe it or not, what you see here is already the result of multiple, multiple iterations. And in the end, I got it to be really compact, but it was tricky, right? Because this entire build has to be at a 45 degree angle to the chassis. And also you've got to have the crankshaft in a position where it can access all four banks uh, to push up the, the pistons. And I think uh, I'm really happy with this. Also, of course, there's like a half stud offset between each cylinder here because these are two uh, narrow bank VR6s essentially um, attached to each other. I'm pretty pleased with this. The only thing I'm not happy about is that if I were to attach suspension arms to this subframe here, uh, I think the car would get really wide and um, I don't know, the, the whole compactness of this unit would be undercut by how bulky everything else would be. So I think I'm going to redesign this front differential unit here. Well, I've now incorporated some suspension as well as a steering system. This is all fairly compact, um, and I've managed to do that without sacrificing any of the structure of the engine, because the differentials and drivetrain components are still in the exact same spot. Well, here's quite a jump forward in time. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the car looks very different, um, but believe it or not, the front suspension and engine uh, setup that we've got here uh, hasn't changed at all. Um, although I have changed from these smaller size wheels to these what I would consider to be medium sized wheels, which I've never really used before. I usually either build with these or with the much larger Technic wheels. Um, but to me, this actually looks right, given how wide the suspension was getting. I think this larger size wheel looks really good. Um, at the rear suspension, uh, it's not too complicated, essentially the same geometry at the front, except without steering. Um, and there's even enough space here to make it motorized, which is what I have done. So uh, this is essentially a similar chassis to some of my previous models, like the Citroën SM, except it's all-wheel drive, and uh, that means that there's one little extra level of complexity. What I'm wondering now, though, is, is it possible to add a gearbox at this scale and still have an interior and motorization? Because I've sort of committed to this uh, possibility of going larger, given the larger wheels. Looking at the front suspension, you can see that we've implemented an anti-roll bar. Um, you can see that this attaches to that axle down there, which flexes and attaches to the other end. We've got the same setup here. In fact, it's a little more clearly visible here. And then at the rear suspension, we've got just a really compact system where instead of a suspension strut, we've just got a spring kind of uh, hovering between the lower wishbone and the frame. And that works fairly well. Looking at the bottom of the chassis, the drivetrain does something which I've never done before, where we've got a center differential, but the drive ratio to the front diff is different from the rear, because at the front differential we're going directly to the 16-tooth gear to the diff, whereas from the back of the diff we go to this 12-tooth, then the 16, then the differential. Now if we were to implement a diff lock here, we wouldn't be able to do this trick with the different ratios, because that would mean that the rear wheels would be spinning slower than the fronts. But because uh, this doesn't have a diff lock, this is actually allowed, and this is actually done in some cars in real life. But let's take a look at how the drive line works. We've just got this PFM motor here, which drives uh, the diff uh, via this link at the top, and then the diff splits to the front and rear, and you can see the drive train in action. Furthermore, the M motor also spins the piston engine. All 12 cylinders pumping away fairly quickly there. And of course, we also have steering, which means that this is fully remote controlled. So there's a quick look at this chassis as it stands so far. Given the layout with a W12 up front and all wheel drive, this could either be a Bentley Continental GT or a Volkswagen uh, Phaeton. I haven't entirely decided which one. I think the next direction I'm going to take this is trying to fit a gearbox somewhere in here while still preserving interior space and the remote control functions. So I'll see you guys on the next video.